Hey guys, today we're going to be solving lead for problem 309. Best time to buy and sell stock with cool down. It's um, it's basically a variation of the normal uh, stock problem, um, stock price problem of buying and selling stocks uh, where you're given stock prices on different days and you're supposed to gain maximum profit by either doing one transaction or in some other cases doing multiple transactions. Uh, the caveat with this problem is that uh, you can do multiple transactions but uh, if you sell a stock you can only buy it after one day of cool down meaning you, if you buy a, if you sell your stock on day 6 you cannot immediately buy a new stock on day 7 you have to wait until day 8 to buy a new stock that's the only variation and this is a dynamic programming problem a dynamic programming problem that i like a lot uh, because it's very intuitive it's easy to follow and uh, it uh, the entire problem revolves around two uh, like two lines like two statements that will be the defining uh, that will define the entire solution for this problem uh, okay so you have you've been given a prices array of size n uh, you have to basically create a, a deep you don't have to create a 2d array but i like working with two, uh, 2d arrays which is why i'm going to be creating an n by 2 dimensional 2d array uh, basically it will have the same number of rows as the prices array and it will it will have two columns so for every day we so every day for every day in prices we'll maintain two values and these two are these two statements are the ones I was talk, talking about. So DP of I comma zero. It basically holds the maximum profit on day I with zero stocks in hand. And DP of I one will be the max profit on day i with one stock in hand so the entire solution will revolve around these two statements if you understand this you are good to go with the solution uh, with that we are, i think we are ready to code i'll just comment these out I'm going to be coding in Swift. If you're not familiar with Swift, it's not a problem. It's very readable. And I'm going to be explaining the lines of code as I code, uh, as I write down the code. So you'll be good. Just putting it on an empty prices array check. Not exactly empty. We are going to only work with the prices array if it has more than two values because otherwise there's uh, like, uh, there's no way to make a profit, right? I mean, sorry, uh, the size of the prices array has to be greater than one. At least uh, the size of the prices, prices array has to be at least two for you to sell the st uh, buy the stock and sell it to make some profit at the very least. I'm saying so just putting in that border condition. If the prices, the size of the prices array is zero or one, we simply return a zero profit. Going to be creating a 2D array. Now the syntax for creating 2D arrays in Swift is a little convoluted. You can ignore the syntax. It's here I'm only creating a 2D array of, si of size n by 2. That's all I'm doing here. Initializing all values to 0. Creating two columns. and cross to okay so let's initialize some values for day zero so for day zero if i have zero stocks in my hands it basically means that i've done no transactions at all and the maximum profit i that i could have made in that case is zero if on day zero i have one stock in my hand it basically means that I have bought a stock on that hand and that negatively impacts the profit because I'm losing money in buying 
so I'm going to be initializing this with zero this basically means that I bought a stock on day zero and this basically means that I did nothing on day zero I'll also initialize for day one If I have, oh, I'm sorry. If I have zero stocks in hand on day one, it could mean two things. Either I did not buy a stock on day zero and I did not buy a stock on day one, which basically means that I have zero profit or it means that I bought a stock on day zero which is represented by this and I sold it today which and selling will add to our profit so I'm going to add this at the price of value on day one or it could mean that if on day one I have one stock in hand it could either mean that I bought a day, stock on day zero and did nothing else and I did nothing on day one or I did not buy a stock on day zero which is represented by this but I bought a stock today DP of zero comma zero is zero so let me just remove this yeah cool we are done with the initialization and let me just collapse this okay if so basically we are trying to return the max profit that we can have on the last day right so with zero stocks in hand we, we want to be done with all our transactions by the last day so this is the final value we will be returning let's start writing the for loop so for we are we'll start processing from day three which is basically two by our indexing so if we have zero stocks in hand on day i it could either mean two things and we have to take the max of those two things if you have zero stocks in hand on day i it basically could mean that we had zero stocks in hand on day i minus one as well and we did nothing no transactions on day i or we did have a stock in hand on day i minus one and we sold it today and if we sell something it adds to our profit because we are like receiving money and so we'll add it to our profit for day i it could either mean this or if we have one stock in hand on day i it could mean two things and we take the max of that it could either mean that we had one stock on hand on day i minus one as well and we do it and we did no transactions on day i or we had we sold a stock on day i minus two respecting the lockdown constraint and we bought a stock today Please note that this is where the cooldown constraint, we are uh, bringing the cooldown constraint uh, into the code uh, because um, uh, by the cooldown constraint, we cannot buy a stock today if we have just sold the stock on a previous day. Meaning, if we are buying a stock today, it has to, uh, it uh, the last transaction of selling the stock would have to be done on day i minus two this is the point where we are respecting the cooldown constraint and that's it a very beautiful elegant small dynamic programming solution that i really like let's see if it works okay run with this It works awesome. Uh, please note that this is also uh, an order end solution because we just have one for loop iterating over the prices array. It has some 
space complexity but i think that's like that's kind of avoidable if it is avoidable please let me know in the comments um you don't have to work with 2d arrays for this problem you could have two separate 1d arrays this is uh, just for this just helps me think uh, i think better in this way but there is no hard restrictions on how you should store uh, the values anyway thanks for your time good luck bye